All of the world's data is secured using encryption protocols that are impossibly hard to crack using brute force computing. But two weeks ago, a paper came out that almost turned data security upside down. You see, there's a special kind of computer called quantum computer that can, in theory, crack modern encryption protocols in minutes. That means that no data online would be safe from hackers. Not your Bitcoin, not your feed picks, nothing. So a lot of the internet, including companies like Google, recently started moving to post-quantum cryptography, or PQC, which is built on protocols that will hopefully be hard for even quantum computers to crack. But cryptographer Dr. Yile Chen's quantum algorithm seemed to jeopardize even PQC. And for many days, the whole quantum community was scrambling to figure out whether this paper was correct. Because the potential of this algorithm, if correct, is massive. In this video, we'll tell you what happened when hundreds of physicists and computer scientists started peering into this paper. We'll explain how quantum computers threaten modern encryption, why Dr. Chen's algorithm threatened even PQC, and what we can learn from all this. If you're new here, welcome to Quantum News Monthly. I'm Debo, And I'm Mingyu. We're quantum computing researchers, and we read and explain breakthrough quantum papers so you don't have to. But we have to admit that we were completely out of our depth with this paper. So we leaned heavily on Dr. Hans Hu, who is a cryptography researcher. But before getting to Dr. Chen's new quantum algorithm, we need to understand how modern encryption works in the first place. When I text Debo that I figured out how to hack into your Bitcoin, I wouldn't want an interceptor to be able to see my message. So messaging apps will encrypt or garble this data such that only the intended recipient can decrypt or ungarble the message with their private key. Encryption takes advantage of math problems that are hard to solve in one direction, but easy in the other direction. The most famous example is factoring. Multiplying two numbers together is pretty easy for classical computers, but factoring a huge number is extremely hard. This is the basis for RSA encryption that has been used everywhere, and it would take a supercomputer millions of years to crack it. With RSA, the private keys are two large prime numbers, and when you multiply them together, you get the public key, simply put. But in 1994, Peter Shor came up with an algorithm that you can run on a quantum computer to factorize large numbers easily. Shor's algorithm, therefore, threatens many modern encryption methods based on RSA, elliptic curves, and discrete log. This is, of course, in theory, because you need large quantum computers with perfect qubits, which is still many years away. But that doesn't mean your enemies cannot download your encrypted data now and decrypt it in several decades when the technology becomes available. Imagine if your feed pics got leaked online in 36 years because you're still using RSA. That would just kill the vibe. That's why experts say that we should move to quantum safe encryption now. In 2016, NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, launched a competition to source new post-quantum cryptography schemes. Cryptographers came up with many schemes that are hard to crack for both classical and quantum computers. NIST scientists then analyzed these protocols, trying to find vulnerabilities, until they narrowed down the list to these four finalists. And you know what's interesting about these finalists? Most of them are based on lattice problems, which are incredibly hard to solve. Lattice problems can also be reframed as learning with errors, or LWE problems. Solving one means you can solve the other. So let's try to understand LWE problems. And I promise the math is really easy, but if you don't care, you can skip ahead. But I won't be happy. Imagine you're given a set of linear equations like this, and you have to find the unknowns. If you paid attention during high school, you'd be like, oh, this is a matrix problem. And you'd be right. This is learning without errors. Now let's make this a little harder. We'll add some small random errors to these equations, then it's actually pretty damn hard to find out the errors and unknowns, given only the equations. And that is basically the learning with errors problem. This is the hard problem that is used in lattice-based cryptography. The interesting thing about this cryptography is that your message is an equation. You can watch Dr. Kelsey Houston Edwards' videos that explain learning with errors much better than we can. But simply put, you can encode zero or one by putting in either no offset or a large offset to the equation, respectively. Here, the public key is a set of original linear equation, that's this matrix, and the private key is the correct solution for the unknowns, that's this vector. If you know the private key, it's very easy to plug in these values and figure out if the offset is zero or large, plus minus small errors. But if an eavesdropper only knows the public key, 
they have no choice but to solve the lattice space to LWE problem, which is known to be very hard even for quantum computers. Or at least that's what we know so far. So at the moment, we really only have, for encryption in particular, we really only have lattice-based post-quantum crypto systems. So if Chen's algorithm breaks lattices, as he claims, then we, in, in a way, it feels like we would sort of have to start from scratch. That was Hans, who graciously explained the landscape of post-quantum crypto to us for this video. We also learned that this was not the first attempt to overthrow post-quantum crypto with quantum algorithms. There are some past work, like even, even Peter Shor himself uh, has a paper out on archive that claimed quantum network algorithm, I think around 2015 or so, but that was shown to be wrong within one day, actually. So uh, they ended up retracting that paper. There have been other attempts as well. Uh, there is a paper by Mark Dundry uh, and other people I know. And as far as I know, that is still believed to be a correct lattice algorithm. It's just not relevant for breaking cryptography in particular. And then there was a third attempt, I remember, uh, by Sean Halgren, where he came up with, an, uh, with a quantum algorithm to break lattices in particular parameter regime, which, as far as I know, I think the uh, algorithm is correct. But the problem is that the, the parameter regimes that he was breaking, turns out that you can break those classically too. So you don't gain anything from upgrading to a quantum algorithm. And of course, the latest attempt was by Dr. Yile Chen of Tsinghua University which is the news that we're covering today. Just to be clear, Dr. Chen hasn't claimed that his new algorithm can break post-quantum cryptographic schemes, just that it can solve some lattice problems efficiently. Since he posted the paper on April 10, the quantum community went haywire. Uh, it just dropped on the uh, online e-print and it's you know, 60 pages and then, right? So the entire community is sort of panicking. Of course, you have the crypto community who is panicking and then you have the quantum uh, algorithms community who, who are celebrating um, but both of them want to know if it's correct right um, and uh, what became clear very quickly is that um, the quantum people don't know enough about lattice cryptography to be able to verify the attack uh, and the uh, crypto people don't know enough quantum physics to be able to understand the algorithm so one Norwegian cryptographer created a Discord community to help each other understand the paper. Here's how the algorithm works. So um, there are nine steps in the algorithm, nine main steps. And in each, each step, it, it makes computations on a uniform superposition of all possible uh, lattice instances. And it makes computations on them that involve quantum Fourier transforms and similar stuff. So these are the same techniques that a uh, short algorithm uses. But he's, he's using very like novel variants of these techniques that they haven't seen before, which are very interesting. Across those nine steps, he uh, manipulates the state carefully until in the ninth step, he reaches a state that involves, or so he claims, useful information about the secret. And then you measure that state and you get an equation. Because you're trying to find a vector, you essentially have an unknown. Uh, and then you have to run these nine steps roughly and time. So this is this is essentially what he's doing. He's uh, performing all of these fancy manipulations so that at the end of the nine steps, he can get one equation and then he does this end time. And then he shows, or at least claims to show, that with very high probability, uh, you will get an independent um, equation, which is enough to solve the system for uh, an unknown. But there was a crucial error in the ninth step of the algorithm. According to the, an update that Dr. Chen posted on April 19, the promised polynomial time no longer holds. Two people independently pointed these errors out to Dr. Chen, Hong Shun Wu and Thomas Vidik. Hong Shun Wu is a PhD student at Berkeley, and Dr. Thomas Vidik is a Caltech professor of CS who I've had the fortune to co-author a paper with. Even though Chen's algorithm didn't overthrow post-quantum crypto yet, there's a lot to learn from this story. First of all, the algorithm is still very creative. But what I'm uh, excited about is that regardless of whether or not this is true and can be used to break lattice photography, um, the techniques are a breath of fresh air into this research field of designing quantum algorithms. And I'm hopeful that this will lead to new development uh, for the first time, or I shouldn't say for the first time, but more development than in the past decade. Um, 
by just applying these new techniques and these very interesting ideas. At the same time, it's crazy how few experts there are in this area. And it doesn't mean that we're completely in the clear either from quantum attacks with current lattice schemes. The techniques that he uses are still extremely interesting. And it's, even if this bug cannot be uh, fixed at the moment, it's not at all clear to me that these techniques can't lead to an attack. I think even, I think for the cryptographic community in general, it will be a while before we feel safe from this attempt. However, it is still remarkable that the peer review process worked in the best way possible in this example. When the situation called for the Earth's bravest quantum crypto people, they found a way to get together and help each other work through this dense paper. This is what the scientific process is all about.